The Ramble On, talking media to death and diving into spoilers with Brendan and Nick, an autopsy for the sinners and ascension for the saints of film and television. All right, welcome to The Ramble On. All right, let's dissect this uh, monstrosity of a film. It's a kind of a double ah, take. <laughs> See nice. what I did there? <laughs> yeah, you did good. <laughs> All right. So, the biggest thing I do want to talk about is the story for this film, because uh, this is kind of just getting the bad out of the way before I get to talk about how much I loved certain parts of this film. I agree. So, this story does kind of have a, st- a structure of an A plot, a B plot, and then kind of a C plot on top of that. So, the A plot is, of course, the monster fight. The, the, the monsters are rising, they're fighting for control of the world, and Godzilla and Ghidorah are fighting off to see who is the dominant apex predator amongst the dinosaurs, who they all have to follow, or the monsters. Uh, it's it's what you would expect. It's a fun plot. It's yeah. a lot of fun fights. But the, the movie's tied together through human characters, because we need a human protagonist, unfortunately. Et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the B plot is kind of a kidnapping plot where, like, uh... This guy's ex-wife and and his daughter get kidnapped by bioterrorists, eco-terrorists. Yeah. It's by so eco-ter- fucking stupid. By eco-terrorists because she designed a thing that lets her wake up and control monsters, sort of. Except not really. And then it turns out that the twist, which is in the first like forty-five minutes, which felt rushed, like its own separate movie, title yeah, movie, was that she. She's actually reached out to the bioterrorists and wants to wake up the monsters one at a time and return world to nature. It's so fucking dumb. Uh, it's dumb, but I get why it's there. Because w- with the kidnapping plot and the missing daughter plot, we get to have an excuse to have ground level uh, shots of the fights. Yeah. Which, that's that's one of the scenes where he li- li- touches down and tries to find his daughter amongst the the wreckage of the dinos- the monsters fighting. The dad? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, because that scene is so dumb for what he's doing, but the background shots of the monsters stepping, being thrown around, fighting, just like with these quick little cuts in and out of the fight are amazing oh, shots. yeah! They're fantastic looking. And that made me appreciate that. While this plot is dumb and it wastes about 45 minutes of the movie with not monster fighting, it made me appreciate that we at least get to have some ground floor visions of the monsters, and we get to have the humans kind of contribute to these fights a little bit. Yeah, I agree. That just, I mean, it, the, to have that little human perspective of the whole pandemonium that just unfurls there, it's just epic, really. It's just awesome. Some fantastic shots come out of that plot. But we do, unfortunately, have kind of a wasted character, which is the, uh, the, bio, the eco-terrorist leader. Uh, oh, yeah. And him, I liked the way he played his character. I liked how he was kind of genre savvy. Like, oh, wow, the little girl you brought along ruined my plans. Wow, who could have seen that coming? Ugh. Like, he's constantly calling out calling out this woman for, justifiably, mind you, for bringing her daughter, who had no idea what her plan was, to this eco-terrorist base and being surprised when she lashed out. Like, yeah, that was going to happen. What would you expect? <laughs> right. Yeah, okay, if I may interject, let's just dissect each of the individual characters. So the dad. Okay, we did need a somewhat anthropological character in this film. Dad looked schlubby. Yeah, dad was totally schlubby. He and, looked schlubby as hell. Like, there's a few scenes early on where he uh, he's giving, like, orders, like... They open up the bay doors. He needs to see us. And then he walks forward. He's got like this hunch. He's kind of fat. He's got like no neck. And he just looks so silly walking walking up in this epic shot. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind him being schlubby because he's supposed to be the common man. He's supposed to be yeah. someone who's an outsider who doesn't really work with the government. But he just looks a little bit too silly for this kind of movie. Like this, does. Is a, this is a movie where I expect him to be like the chiseled jawed Hollywood types who are just there to, to narrate what the monsters are doing. I don't need him to actually be relatable. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I, he, His character was just over the top for me because uh, I don't play by the rules. I'm going to have them open the blast shield so I can look at Godzilla his dead ca- in the his eye. His character was also inconsistent because some, yeah. s- some scenes he would be really gung-ho about kill them all, hate those monsters, and then he would kind of flip over to, well, maybe we need Godzilla to fight for us, and maybe I can learn to respect and love Godzilla. I know, he, he won he, he, flips, he flips around a lot in the script. He does. Uh, uh, likewise, his wife has kind of that problem where she's kind of hysterical despite clearly planning out this uprising for a long time. 
she kind of comes across as not really knowing what she's doing, unfortunately. In part due to the plot and the way that Ghidorah ends up playing out as a character. But also just in general, like, she doesn't seem to realize that, oh, my daughter didn't know what I was doing. Oh, I should have told her. Oh, that was this was a bad choice. I harbored the most animosity for that character because when she fucking brings her kid after she lost another to a monster lab. And then, uh, so speaking of, basically everything involved in the eco-terrorist doesn't really work because, A, they're trapped in one location. They don't have the super ship that can go everywhere in the world to see the monsters like the main cast do. Oh, yeah, you're right. They're like, yeah, the whole eco-terrorist and the hostages. Uh, and, and, and their problem yeah. is they're, they're in the, uh, the, the rough, dense forests of Boston. <laughs> right. And it's the weirdest thing because there's a scene where, as you might expect, the, the daughter kind of decides decides to, to man up, go and grab the thing and solve this problem herself. And she just walks to the stadium from the secret base that's barely hidden. I know, the secret base is like, yeah, Cobra Command is right next to the goddamn stadium where the evacuations are taking place. And Super convenient, now, by the way. No, my, my thought was... Shouldn't someone be trying to stop her? Shouldn't she have some kind of obstacle to prevent her from doing the things she wants? Like th This is how plots work. We have obstacles and overcoming obstacles. Right. There's no, like, sneaking out difficulty thing. Like she, but the, she, the bioterrorists are super soldiers. But she's mostly there to get the monsters to come to Boston and to have the whole fight in Boston so they can film there. She's one of those characters where... She's there just to get the plot moving to a certain place. No, it's like you said. They they've definitely rushed some of the human plots because, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, honestly, I've got my own idea of why I would have wanted the human plots to be, but I'll get into that later. I sure. want to talk about the C plot as well. I yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. What, what yeah, C plot? So the C plot is also involving the love issue between Mothra and Godzilla. That, oh God. It, it, it wasn't bad. I actually liked it. Because uh, Mothra ends up serving a, a vital purpose of showing where Godzilla is, serves as kind of a love interest for Godzilla in a way, and then she also sacrifices herself in what's actually the most moving character death in the entire movie, because she, she uh, tries to take on Ghidorah to protect Godzilla and sacrifices herself to give him the radiation that he needs to come back. And it actually was one of the few things that really works in this movie as far as like love, love plots go, because like... These monsters, I genuinely felt that Mothra was, like, sacrificing himself for the greater good. It actually worked for me. Uh, I'm dreading the fan art, but yeah, uh, the whole symbiotic relationship between Godzilla and Mothra, I kind of dug. It was it was kind of nice. Uh, and it was kind of cool to have the two-on-two -two fight where she's fighting Rodan while I Godzilla agree. is fighting Ghidorah. Right. No, it's just, it was nice to see not just Godzilla sympathizing with humans, but the humans actually ha have or had two monsters on their side. And there, there actually is this whole part, too, where they kind of realize, wait a minute, Godzilla's underground. We need to get a nuke to him to, in order to save him. And that part was one of the ones that worked, because we get a lot of nice storytelling where we see Godzilla's lair as, like, some kind of hollow point in the earth that he, yes. that he does to... And we see a lot of, like, Roman, Egyptian stuff that's on the walls that kind of shows that Godzilla has been around and kind of been worshipped. And there's a really obvious Jesus angle that they play up with Godzilla as well. Which oh, yeah. I, I don't know why they play it up so hard for Jesus. <laughs> and the resurrection. It's, it's one of those things where I feel like it's kind of like if you got a puzzle piece from another puzzle and it fitted perfectly with the puzzle. Like, yeah, it fits in and all, and all the things around it fit, but it's very clearly wrong. Yeah. Okay, so we did talk about uh, new characters. We talked about that goddamn family. Let's talk about recurring characters, because like you said, uh, the whole nuclear thing uh, to revive Godzilla, that scene was played out by a character from the previous movie, uh, Dr. I forget his name. Doctor, I forget his name too. Dr. Sawada. I, I, I'm not even going to try. But yeah, uh, the, doc, the Japanese professor from the previous film is the one that sacrifices himself to revive Godzilla, and that was pretty epic. It was a nice curtain call to that character. It also has some of the best monster effects, I think, in the movie, is when he gets really close, he touches it, and it looks like he's actually touching the monster. Like, I didn't think, like, oh, this is clearly CGI. That was it great. It looked surprisingly good. Yeah, and not to mention the set. The set was very well designed. I thought, That's you know, like, set. yeah, yeah, it was like, ooh, a whole new culture that worshiped these things. That's pretty epic. Well, it's not just a whole new culture. They kept finding evidence in the past of Godzilla, like being the one to take down Ghidorah. Mm. And uh, speaking of characters, let's talk about the monster characters too. 
because uh, Godzilla is seen as kind of this benevolent creature who at least doesn't fight things he doesn't need to fight. He, he's kind of the Goku of this world. Where yeah. He, he just wants a good fight. He keeps balance. He, he yeah, he stands up for the little guy. <laughs> Uh, likewise, Mothra is seen as kind of very benevolent. She uh, actively does not want to harm humans and seems to be a little bit protective of them in some ways. She's very attached to Godzilla. She's kind of interesting like that. Uh, yeah. Rodan is kind of this very impulsive bird creature. He, yeah. He, he's just a monster. Yeah. And He'll G side with whoever's the strongest. <laughs> and Ghidorah actually did interest me because he's supposed to be kind of an alien creature that wants to terraform the world to his advantage. And he's kind of fooling humanity in a way. That kind of confused me. Uh, well, it fascinated and confused me at the same time. So I'm like, wait, now he's an alien? What the fuck? <laughs> it, it was where they established him as the villain of the movie. You know, like, he, oh, he wants to terraform the world to be bad for people. Uh-oh. Okay, so they did kind of treat it like a whole physiological kind of thing. Like, oh, the alien is an infection, and he's going to turn the whole world into one big, fiery it's inferno. Why, it's why Goku's got to stop him. <laughs> Go get right. him, Godzilla, Goku. <laughs> um, no, and uh, let me see, other characters. Well, there were a plethora of other monsters, but they... There were other monsters, but they're purely visual. Uh, except for uh, the teaser for Godzilla vs. King Kong that was in the files. Oh. Like, while it's going through the files, you see one that's like uh, Titan Kong, something like that. Wait, that was a... I didn't see that. Where was that? Uh, it's when they're scrolling through the different monsters on the tablet thing. One of them is Kong. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, okay. This movie was good enough with the parts that it paid off on that I'm still excited for that. Okay, let's get... So I did see Kong on Skull Island. It was a terrible movie, but uh, I did kind of appreciate the, how they do try to tie in the whole series together. It sounds like it's going to be fun if we get yeah. a King Kong vs. Godzilla movie, if nothing else. Yeah, yeah. They're trying to bring the two together. I'm kind of intrigued by the prospect, but... It's I wouldn't encourage you to watch Con on Skull Island. The movie just sucked. <laughs> it might be a reimagining of King Kong as well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But uh, I do want to talk about... I, I mentioned before I had a different idea for the B-plot and how it would play out. And I think I've got just the thing that would please people that want both the monster movie and World War Monster. Please, to help me cleanse this pal of that horrible family B-plot. All right, so... Here's how we play out the plot. Instead of having just the one team of the people on, like, because you know that what they were doing with the movie was they were having two different teams that had different pieces of the puzzle that needed to be brought together. The eco-terrorists had the thingy that was waking them up and was able to pacify them. And the people on the, the ship had the uh, weapons and military to support the monster, right? Oh, if I may interrupt you for a second, let's introduce uh, what the plot device you're talking about is. So, yeah, the mother... Uh uh, or, or tertiary antagonist. She made a sound thing. Yeah, she made a sound thing. And there were like two different pieces of the puzzle and of the sound thing. One, the protagonist had one part and she had the other. Anyways, what we would do is instead of it being eco-terrorists who are uh, just kind of having no particular plan or any reason to do things, we make that the Chinese government who's back in Ghidorah. Ooh, the Chinese government. Okay, now that is a... Mm. <laughs> so, so what we change it to, because it'll play well Chinese markets, I think, is we have a full cast of uh, for the Chinese government, right? We have all these all these main actors who are kind of going through the same process as the Americans, where they're figuring out these monsters are waking up. We need to pick a champion and back it. Well, we just had a scientist from, uh, let's say, a scientist from Korea who's brought a device that's able to tame some of the monsters. They use that, they wake up Ghidorah, and he seems to respond to the device, right? So then the Chinese government fights alongside Ghidorah. Meanwhile, the United States government doesn't realize they're doing this yet, so they try and fight Godzilla. They, they have to figure out that, wait a minute, they're backing Ghidorah. We have to back our own monster. What if we back Godzilla? Then we have a few battle scenes where instead of it being like this dumb stuff, it's militaries fighting alongside the monsters and supporting them with different tactics Ooh. through that. But then the twist ends up being to the movie that... Like, the Chinese government finds out, wait a minute, Ghidorah isn't responding to the waves at all. He's using us. He's, he's, he's trying to trick us into destroying the only things that can defeat him. The combined might of Godzilla and the military. And then, like, the Korean scientist or someone who's not Chinese specifically is the guy who wants to keep using the device and believes in Ghidorah. And he's, like, being tricked by Ghidorah. While the Chinese government, like, figures it out, deals with the traitor. And then, during that final fight, 
It looks like they're going to support Ghidorah, but then they drop all their bombs on Ghidorah and make a sneak attack for him. So everyone's on the same side to fight against Ghidorah. Hmm. Now that... Okay, I'm kind of... I'm for a lot of that, except that might cause some political controversy. Because I do like not the... Not necessarily, because the, the Chinese government are the misinformed good guys. They're using an advantage that they have. They're leveraging it. And when they're wrong, they acknowledge it and switch sides. Hmm. Hmm. That would be a better plot than the goddamn eco-terrorist thing. That was just because, dumb. because we get to have a lot of fun with having a having like let's say like ground troops are on the ground, but then we have like a over shoulder over shoulder view of some of them, the the horrors of finding these monsters alongside another monster. We get to have opportunities for a lot of fun fights. We get to have moments where, if we need to slow the plot down, it's because one government is trying to do subterfuge on another government instead of it being like a I gotta save my daughter type plot, which is overplayed. Oh, way overplayed. No, I do kind of like your notion of two of uh, uh, a arms race ending up in a unified uh, uh, effort to stop the ultimate evil. That That's a good idea. It also ends up kind of being a World War II um, analogy because they have to use the nukes to wake up Godzilla. Right. That is a better concept than the goddamn family B plot. That, that would have been my suggestion, at least, if I'm, I had to. I but would be for that. Honestly, as far as this movie goes, I don't think it needs that many changes. It's a generic B plot, yes, but it does the job. It gets characters where they need to go. It lets us see the cool monster stuff. Yeah. It does its job. It does its job. Though, I think that if we're going to talk about the tactics they use to fight the monsters, generally the, UN, the, the military and monarch have a pretty shit strategy. Like... For Rodan, their plan is to lure him away towards uh, Ghidorah, right? Which kind of works, but the problem is they lure him over the city they're trying to protect. Right, that was which, stupid. Which uh, kind of ravages the city and kills a lot of people. Yeah, they couldn't have maybe like, go around the city. You couldn't <laughs> have, yeah, you couldn't have nudged the Google navigation to like maybe go around the city. <laughs> <laughs> that was so goddamn dumb. And no, I mean, I, I mean, it was a fun scene. It, it was really fun. It was dumb, but it was fun. Yeah. No, I mean, their idea to have the monsters fight each other and kill each other horrendously backfired as Rodan submitted to King uh, Ghidorah. Well, that one backfired, but Godzilla's didn't because you know the United States military was dumb and just said, "We're going to use an oxygen bomb." Uh oh. <laughs> oh, that didn't work out at all. Shit. Well, I mean, it hit a target. It hit a target. It hit the wrong target, but it hit something. <laughs> well, it hit them both. Just Ghidorah's a freaky alien, so. Oh, yeah. I felt weird that that little subplot never got a follow-up of, like, the United States military at least apologizing or saying, All right, Mona, you guys have the right idea. We need to listen to your advice from now on. Something like that. Yeah, the military was only in there for, like, what? A granddaddy total of two scenes. The whole briefing of between... Uh, uh, there's the early court hearings where they bring in some of the military people that are on the ship later on. Yeah. And then they bring in the admiral from the previous movie to say, Hey, we're going to shoot a bomb. Also, <laughs> right from the office. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to put up this video of monsters breeding. Very informative. Well, let's put some pixelations on there. Uh, yeah, hopefully this is the very best pixelation. That was a weird joke. That was a weird joke. Uh, but no, the, mili the U.S. military is only only in it for like two scenes. If I may uh, go off the handle for a bit. Go for it. I want to ask you, didn't you... They kind of treated Monarch like the uh, SCP franchise, you know? They kind of... They treated it more like S.H.I.E.L.D., if anything. Oh, that's a good comparison, too. S.H.I.E.L.D. for Marvel. That's a good comparison, too. Because they did have those airships. Mm-hmm. That's a good comparison. <laughs> but, yeah, they're definitely... Well, I think they're treating it as an excuse to get the camera where we need to get the camera. They have a super fast, stealthy jet that can be very small and easy to hide in the filmography. It does its job. It yeah. gets us there. It gets us there. I'm not going to complain. I just thought it was kind of in silly slash interesting that they went with, uh, oh, we're not going to... It's not going to be the U.S. military, but a whole other organization that's S.H.I.E.L.D.-esque. <laughs> Yeah, I, I still would have loved to have like a World, World War monster scenario where we have to actually do a, like logistics battle scenarios and planning around the monsters' movements to stage our next fights. Right. Like I, I like the idea of like the militaries fighting each other, and I'm fine with the environmental message that goes on at these movies every time. Mm. But uh, I'm not sure if it's really relevant in these movies because like 
yeah, nature's going to grow back, but humanity is still pretty fucked, and we tend to care about humanity. No. We're we, humanity. Yeah. We don't want to distract too much from the main attraction, which is the monsters fighting, so I get that. You're right. Uh, <laughs> still, they could have garnished it a little better than they did with this film, I feel like, especially with, just with the entire B-plot, because like you said, the eco-terrorists, they just dropped off the map toward the ends of the movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that if I was going to go for my summer thoughts... The, the B plot could have been done better, but I think the A plot and kind of the C plot that was in there works well enough that this is one of the very few monster movies where the monsters legitimately have a plot arc and actually have kind of a kind of an interesting C plot of like uh, the relationship between the monsters and them caring about each other to some extent. It's one of the most fleshed out versions of Godzilla and Mothra and Ghidorah that we've seen. And that interests me. Yeah. The B-plot involving the humans is a little bit iffy, and it could have had room for improvements, but it does its job of getting us interesting camera angles and getting us a reason to watch the monsters fight. The B-plot is where I was really disappointed with the movie, but yeah, it, like Nick said, it delivered everywhere else. The A and C did help make up for it. The B-plot just really made me mad. <laughs> That's so, just me. So yeah, I do highly recommend this movie. You have to get through the, the human plotline, but real talk, it kind of peters out and doesn't go anywhere once you're at 45 minutes in, and it's purely focused on the monsters and the relationship between the monsters. Yep, yep, that's uh, actually very well said. <laughs> it does pewter out, especially with the damn eco-terrorists. Um, yeah, they show up every so often, but b because he's kind of hamming it up a little bit and he's, fun he's calling out, like, tropes, it's fun enough. And... Your summary? Uh, I definitely go see for see Godzilla in the theaters exclusively for the monster romps. But uh, no, like Nick said, the B plot is annoying, but it does peter out toward the end as we are given this firework finale of a monster thrashing, and it is just awesome. It is a really fun final scene where Godzilla just has the still living final head of Ghidorah and just pumps it full of radiation. Fatality. <laughs> Brutality. Uh, it's kind of, kind of dumb ending where like, you know, all the monsters bow to Godzilla that you expected over the ruins of Boston. Now, actually, let me ask you that. I was kind of surprised that they all bowed and I'm actually kind of surprised that they all showed up because that wouldn't that mean they kind of would have had to tread water in some way? They're big. They're big. No, okay, they're big. Okay. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I The fact that they all easily submitted to Godzilla kind of hampers the possibility of well, a third well, movie. Well, they were all already submitting to Ghidorah. And Chainsaw Man is going to be a little bit like the old Godzilla movies where he's going to have a monster of the week show up. He has to fight for dominance over the monsters because that's how he keeps how to keep uh, balance in the world is his dominance over monsters. I would expect to see things like King Kong for the next movie, where King Kong challenges him for for control of, of the monsters, and then either uh, what's the turtle one? This Gamora. Gamora. Yeah. The, Ooh, probably, you're right. But probably a Gamora movie at some point. You're right. And then after that, Mecha Godzilla. Oh my God! The, yes. The Russians built a Mecha Godzilla. And yeah, I, I would expect to see these kinds of movies where they're very obviously homages to the old movies and right. other famous monsters, but still pretty fun. Yeah. And then I would hope to see a Gundam movie where okay. just they build Gundams to fight the Godzilla. Oh, God. Okay. And then even Jelly, they put children in those robots. <laughs> now we're just going off the rails. <laughs> All right, but I'm totally with you. Gamora and Mecha Godzilla. I would, I would like. And to then see we how send in does. Dio. <laughs> okay. But yeah, that is my, that's my thoughts on Godzilla. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. I agree. Thumbs up. All right. Tune in next time. All right. Thanks for joining us.